Praise the Lord. We'll rise up and pray together. You want to commit yourself to the Lord today that the Bible study will enrich your life. We'll find some things in your life that need to be put right. And the Lord will give you the grace to be attentive to the word. And when you hear, you surrender your heart, your mind, your life to the Lord so that you'll come nearer and nearer to the center of the wheel and the word and the teaching of the word of God. Open your mouth and talk to the Lord in prayer. Now whatever the Lord corrects in your worship, in your adoration, your lifestyle, in your prayer life, that God will give you the grace to put those things right so that your relationship with God will be what it ought to be. So that will be growing, going higher and higher every day in your fellowship with the Lord and your relationship with the Lord. That the power in the word will work in you and transform you. That God will give you a yielding heart, a submissive heart, a humble heart. To receive, to accept, to bend and to bow to the word of God. That God will help you to exalt the word above self. That you will be a disciple indeed, a disciple of Christ. If you continue in my word, then are ye my disciples, and ye shall know the truth. And the truth will make you free, set you free. In Jesus' name we pray. A very good amen. amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for the great privilege you give us always to be in your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege we have tonight to show up again and to attend the Bible study. Thank you for those who are here. Thank you for the faithfulness of those who love you and love your word. That in spite of rain or the conditions of weather, we're always in your presence. I pray that you reward the faithfulness of your people tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. For our brothers and sisters, young and old, and all the other locations in this great city, and in this state, and in this nation, Nigeria, and all the nations of Africa and beyond Africa that are gathered together today, as we listen to your word together, open our eyes to see. Touch our lives and turn us around in your word in Jesus' name. That every time we hear your word, there will be a change, a transformation. There will be a kind of conversion that will become greater and higher in understanding. In the word of God in Jesus' name. And then your grace will abound in our lives. We will be able to do, to carry out, to obey everything you are teaching us. Give us attentive ears and listening ears even tonight. And give us a heart that will yield and bow and bend and submit to everything you teach us. So that our life in church and outside the church will be according to your word in Jesus name. Thank you Lord for the answer. Bless your people tonight. Make us channels of blessings too. In Jesus name we pray. Thank you very much. You can see now. We're back to Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, the Lord is teaching us some practical, practical things. Number one, as it relates to all the people. Number two, as it relates to ourselves. 
Number three, as it relates to the almighty God himself. Number one, as it relates to the material things we possess, how we make use of those things that we have, given to the needs of the poor and the needy. And then, as it relates to meeting our personal needs, praying unto the Lord that he will supply the needs we have. Number three, as it relates to our attitude to material things that you'll find in chapter six, not to be worried, not to be anxious about what tomorrow will bring, but just to understand that God cares for you. God knows your need and is caring for those needs. Therefore, the conclusion of the chapter is, seek ye therefore the kingdom of God and his righteousness first. And then it says, all these other things shall be added unto you. We're now in that second part that relates to prayer tonight. And the Lord, first of all, he tells us the attitude we ought to have, the disposition we ought to have, and the state of mind we ought to have as we pray. He gives us the examples of people that pray and they do not pray aright. And then he tells us the right attitude and the right condition of mind we ought to have if our prayer is going to be recognized, approved, and then blessed by the Lord so that our desires will be given unto us. That leads us to the passage we are looking at tonight. Matthew chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 5. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 And when thou prayest Thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are For they love to pray standing in the synagogues And in the corners of the streets That they may be seen of men Very literally, certainly without a shadow of doubt I say unto you They have their reward And then now in verse 6 He said but thou when thou prayest Enter into thy closet And when thou art shut Thy door pray To thy father which is in secret And thy father which seeth In secret shall reward thee Openly And then in verse 7 he says But when ye pray Use not vain repetitions As the heathen do for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not ye therefore like unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ concerning prayer. Praying is one of the greatest privileges we have as Christians, as children of God, as members of the family of God. In a relationship with the Lord, the people of God are prayed from the earliest period of history, the history of mankind. In fact, we are told in Genesis chapter 4, I'll just tell you, that says, begat a son. And he called that son Enos. And then it says, then men began to call on the name of the Lord. So you find that prayer actually is as long as mankind, as man itself. And then you find, as you go on, Abraham praying. Then you find Isaac praying. When the wife did not have a child in time, then he married at the age of 40. By the age of, by the age of 60, he yeah, had the children because he entreated the Lord and the Lord heard him. And then you find Jacob at Peniel wrestling with that angel in prayer. And since that time, from the time of Seth, Sinus, and then Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, men and women have been praying. You know the popular, you know the signal prayer of Anna, how she prayed unto the Lord and, and then opened up the fountain of her burden, pouring out her heart unto the Lord. You've heard about Jabez, how Jabez prayed. And sorrow was turned into joy and gladness. You've heard about David, David the king. And also a prayer warrior to you. How he prayed. And he depended upon the Lord. You found people all over the Old Testament praying. Nehemiah and Ezra. And then you have Mordecai. You have Esther. Then you have Ezekiah. Then you have Jehoshaphat. And you have Daniel. You have all these people of 
God, they prayed. And of course, when you come to the New Testament, the New Testament opens with spiritual people, dedicated people, committed people. The people that knew that if you're going to live a fulfilled life, a satisfactory life here on earth, you need an extraordinary power that will come upon your life. The Spirit of God will come upon you and overshadow you. And then you'll be able to do and be able to live an extraordinary life. And then from the very beginning of the New Testament to the very end, you find the people of God wrestling with God in prayer. And how God answered their prayer. Such an important subject then should be a consideration for you and for me to know how can I pray better? How can you pray better so that the Lord will answer our prayers and the Lord will answer your prayers? As we're talking about Abraham, Abraham was called the friend of God. And then he prayed. He prayed not just at an instant, but he prayed constantly. He prayed habitually. And he prayed on virtually everything on his personal life, on his family, on Sodom and Gomorrah, even on the nations to come, still to come. And then we've heard about Moses, how Moses prayed. These two men, great men of God, Abraham, were told Abraham was a friend of God. And then if you're going to pray, that means you develop a relationship between father and son, between father and daughter, between friend and friend. You see, prayer is asking requests from the Almighty God. And that request you're asking from the Almighty God is based on relationship that are rightly related unto the Lord. It is out of that relationship you have the promises of God. And those promises of God become yes and amen in your life. As we're talking about Abraham as the friend of God and also Moses that God speaks to him as a friend speaks to another friend face to face. You're thinking about yourself then. Can we be referred to as a friend of God? Look at J J John chapter 15. In John chapter 15, I'm reading to you from verse 12. John chapter 15 verse 12, which you were the friends of God, were the friends of Christ. In verse 12 it says, this is my commandment. That ye love one another as I have loved you, greater love as no man than this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever I command you. That's relationship. It's out of that relationship and the fellowship that then we develop the life of praying. It says, ye are my friends, if you do whatsoever, I command you henceforth, I call you not servants. For the servant knoweth not what is not doing, but I've called you friends. I've called you friends. Then what's the consequence of that? What's the implication of that? It says, but I've called you friends for all things that I've heard of my father. I have made known unto you. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you that you should go and bring forth fruit and that your fruit should remain. Listen to this now. That whatsoever ye shall ask, whatsoever ye shall demand, Whatsoever ye shall pray for, whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. You know, that's coming out of the relationship of friends. I call you not servants anymore, I call you friends. When you come to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you realize how sinful you have been. Because the Bible says, so have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And in humility, you come before the Lord, bending the knee, bending the heart, and bowing before him, confessing your sin, and forsaking them. He that covereth his sin shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Then, by the mercy of God, you are saved. Your sins are forgiven. Your life is turned around. And then the Lord brings you out of the darkness of the world. And he brings you into the light of the gospel. And you come into the kingdom of God. Now as a member of the kingdom of God, you are a child of God. You are a believer in Christ. You are a disciple of Christ. And then you are a friend of Christ. On the basis of that relationship, a child of God, a disciple of Christ, a friend of Christ, now you can pray and that's why the lord is telling us how to really pray this privilege is not reserved for just some selected people it is yours it is mine it is ours 
Prayer helps us to secure the power and the assistance of omnipotence. Omnipotence, that word omni means all. It's universal. And potence means power, might, strength. When you join those two words together, omnipotence, you are talking about the almighty. You are talking about the all sufficient. You are talking about the all powerful. And then it is prayer that connects you what the power of the almighty it is prayer that connects you with the omnipotence the almighty power of the of god and what he great period then because then your life comes out of ordinary and it becomes extraordinary you become as a man taller when you go now on your knees that's the paradox of the christian life you bend down normally when you bend down we think you'll be shorter we we'll think you'll be lower but bending down and kneeling down and going down actually exalts you and then it's like you enter into the mighty tower and then because you're kneeling down you're entering spiritually into that mighty tower you actually become higher and stronger and greater and taller spiritually man's noblest activity that accomplishes the highest achievement is prayer each man then becomes greater and more powerful and stronger when he's in true communion with the almighty god and yet as we talk about this prayer the lord jesus christ makes us to know there is a wrong way to pray and there's the right way to pray there is a false way of praying and there is a true way of praying there is the ineffective way to pray there is the effective proper mighty way to pray that's why the disciples themselves told the lord they said lord teach us to pray teach us how to pray and that's why we're coming here tonight pleading with the lord that in the study that we have tonight the lord himself he will teach us to pray and when he teaches us how to pray you'll pray better and god will answer your prayer we're going to divide the message to three parts the study tonight to three parts number one the examples of wrong motives in prayer the examples of wrong motives in prayer wrong motives wrong manner of praying wrong methods of praying Number two, exhortation to right motives in prayer. The exhortation of the Lord, the commandment of the Lord to pray aright, to pray well, to pray properly, to pray effectively that the prayers will be answered. Number three, expectation of renewed mind in prayer. The expectation you have when you put all things straight, when you correct the wrong methods, when you change the wrong motives, when you now approach the Lord in the right way, the expectation you have, the faith you have, the confidence and the trust you have in God, that God now will answer your prayer. And tonight, as things are put right, you'll be surprised. God is going to answer your prayer. Things you never thought of, things you never dreamt about. I'll show you in the word of God. How when you just put everything right and say, yes, I now understand that's the wrong method. That's the wrong manner. That's the wrong motive. And I change all that. And then you come to the right approach in your relationship with the Lord. And you pray the way he expects you to pray. The mighty things that begin to happen in your life. It will start tonight. But first of all, let's clear the ground. You know, these builders, these great builders, when you are, as we're coming in, uh, you know, tonight, maybe even if you've come before, you've seen that we're clearing the ground over there. There was a building there before. I want to build something greater, something higher, something more beautiful. Because we're preparing for the Congress uh, coming January 2008. But you see, before we can put something good there, we have to demolish what was there before. And to demolish what was there before, that's going to take some effort. We cannot just fold our hands and say that the old structure there will be destroyed and demolished. We have to pull the bulldozer, caterpillar, whatever, just level everything. And then when you level everything, you get what was there out of the way that will bring something new in place. That's what we're going to do tonight. You look at the wrong method of prayer. 
and the wrong approach to praying and the wrong manner of praying and the wrong method of praying you demolish it you crush it you level it you take it out of the way and then you bring a new format a new approach a new method a new motive and it is that new approach that will open the windows of heaven and then the torrential rain or blessing and miracle will begin to partner upon your life that's why this point one is very important taking out of the way the wrong motive the wrong method the wrong manner examples of wrong motives in prayer let's come to matthew chapter 5 matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 5 matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 5 and when thou prayest by the way it says when thou prayest he takes it for granted you are going to pray he did not say if thou prayest he says when he knows you are going to pray everybody is going to pray those who don't pray here will pray in the great beyond like the rich man asking abraham father abraham send lazarus it's too late he didn't pray here but he had to pray in the great beyond up yonder but it was too late and so he knows everybody is going to pray and so he says when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are you know hypocrites i we learned last week they stain everything they do they corrupt everything they defile everything they do Every, even good things that they do they stain it with hypocrisy they defile and corrupt it with hypocrisy and prayer that's when prayer gets into the hands of hypocrites into the lives of hypocrites everything is done in the wrong way when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues in, and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men those who pray that they may be seen of men those who pray that they may be approved of men those who pray that they may be appreciated by men those who pray that they may advertise themselves publicize themselves that they pray the lord said that is hypocrisy and that it is the prayer method and the prayer motive of the hypocrites that leads us quite to a lot of things let's look at luke chapter 18 in luke chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 11 let's see one of those hypocrites praying and this is what jesus said we shouldn't do luke chapter 18 verse 11 the pharisees stood and prayed thus with himself himself he was at the center stage self-conscious self-centeredness was the real thing you know people who are like that everything they do they are the center of attraction they are the center of activity they are, the, they are the focus of everything that's like the pharisee he prayed thus with himself and then he said god i thank thee what are you thanking him for that i am not as other men are that self-exaltation he put others down and exalted himself as extortioners unjust adulterers he, or even as this publican i fast twice in the week i give tithes of all that i possess and then we're told in verse 13 and the publican standing afar off with humility he will, he will not even come near would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven but smote upon his breast saying god be merciful to me a sinner i tell you this man the publican went down to his house justified rather than the other the pharisee the hypocrite for every one that exalted himself shall be abased his prayer was not answered and they shouldn't have been doing that the lord had told them even from the old testament times look at isaiah chapter one isaiah chapter one i'm reading to you from verse 15 Isaiah chapter 1 verse 15 and when you spread forth your hands I will hide mine eyes from you yea when you make many prayers I will not hear your hands are full of blood you see that uh, there are people that will not take care of their lives their behavior their character their conduct their comportment 
and they just pray and their hands are full of blood and the Lord says I'm not hearing I can't hear a word you're saying your sin covers everything your sin makes you it builds a wall between you and the almighty God that I cannot hear for the Pharisees their hypocrisy built a thick wall between them and the almighty God that God couldn't hear what they were saying now God counseled them as to what to do wash you and make you clean put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes cease to do evil learn to do well seek judgment relieve the oppressed judge the fatherless and plead for the widows then come now it says put everything right demolish the old structure and then you can now come come now and let us reason together says the lord though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow though they be red like crimson they shall be as wool if ye be willing and obedient ye shall eat the good of the land will eat the good of the land but look at verse 20 you know sometimes when i was um, a younger christian i was wondering why verse 20 if you be willing and obedient you shall eat the good of the land i wanted a full stop there but there was no full stop now i understand god had to put this down in verse 20 for the pharisees for the sadducees for the people that hear and they act as if they are not hearing for the people that you know the lord is instructing and then it's like god has not said anything that's why god said but if you refuse and rebel like the pharisees and the sadducees the hypocrites if you refuse and rebel you shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the lord has spoken it let's look at isaiah chapter 58 and those who prayed and they couldn't get god's attention in their prayer in Isaiah chapter 58, I'm reading from verses 1 and 2. Isaiah 58, verse 1, cry aloud, spear not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Um, you know, sometimes you wonder when we're preaching and we have to, something we have to shout. That's what the Lord told us to do. That sometimes when you talk soft, there are people that will not wake up, they will not hear and god told isaiah said isaiah these people are not changing they're not turning around lift up your voice and then it says spear not lift up your voice like a trumpet show my people their transgressions and the house of jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and they like to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinances of their god they ask of me the ordinances of justice they take delight in approaching to god approaching to god as praying but the lord was saying i'm not hearing you because of the wrong method the wrong motive and the wrong attitude look at verse 6 it's not this the first that have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness it says correct your life put things right that's the first have chosen to lose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy bodies to let the oppressed go free and that she break every yoke is not is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh thine own flesh thine own flesh was that your wife your husband they too shall be one flesh don't hide yourself you see how people hinder themselves they are hiding themselves from their wife or from their husband and they're living some secretive kind of life and they're praying god says i'm not hearing it says if you put all these things right in verse 8 then shall thy light break forth as the morning and thy health shall spring for speedily and thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the lord shall be thy rear word then shall thou call and the lord shall answer when we put those things right and we remove the method of the pharisee the method of the sadducee it says then the lord will hear isaiah chapter 59 verse 1 behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither is here heavy that it cannot hear but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear 
you see those Pharisees, their sins. The sin of hypocrisy is a great sin. And the sin of carnality, worldliness, is a great sin. And the sin of wickedness is a great sin. And God said, it is your iniquity, it is your sin that has separated between you and your God, that he has hidden his face from you, and that he will not hear. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity, your lips have spoken lies, your tongue have muttered perverseness, not calleth for justice, nor any pleaded for the truth. They trust in vanity, they speak lies, they conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. That's the reason their prayers were not answered. Proverbs chapter 28, I'm reading from verse 9. Proverbs 28 verse 9. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. Brothers and sisters, and let's be wise. You know, there are people where there are places where they pray and they pray a lot, but there's no doctrine, there's no teaching, there's no teaching that changes the life, turns the life around. And as some of our people sometimes, sometimes I sympathize with them. They are problems and they want to get the problem solved. And they say, I, I, in a place they are praying. I know they are not teaching the Bible there. I know they are not teaching doctrines there. But am I, am I going to stay on doctrine? I'm suffering. I want, to, I want to get to the place and pray with them. It's a waste of time. Because you see, the word of God makes it very clear. He that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, where there is no teaching, there is no doctrine, there is no instruction. And the truth is not emphasized. And the life is not, is not right because of the lack of teaching. It says, he that turneth away his ear from hearing the law, even his prayer shall be abomination. That's the reason why you need, to, you need to give yourself to the word. Look at Psalm 66. I'm reading from verse 18. Psalm 66, verse 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what does that mean? If I nurse iniquity in my heart, if I embrace iniquity privately in my heart, secretly, and if I, if I, if I hide iniquity in my heart, in my life, even though people may not know, even though it's just in your heart, in your private house, within you and your sin partner. I say, don't tell our church, don't tell our members. If you regard iniquity in your heart, then it says, the Lord will not hear me. You see, that does the thing. That's the reason. You're not living a righteous life because of other believers. You're not living a righteous life because of coordinator group coordinator because of the pastor. You're not trying to do right in your place of work because of me, because of yourself. Because you know, if you regard iniquity in your heart, in your private life, even though I may not know, the Lord will not hear your prayer. And then you are suffering and suffering. And then will you pray and we pray, everybody prays and you're still in that same condition. And then we are wondering, God is a God who answers prayer. His promises are yes and amen. Why is he that this man's prayer, this woman's prayer is not being answered? We are fasted, we are prayed for him and the answer is not coming. If you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. Proverbs chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 24. Proverbs chapter 1, verse 24. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. What does it mean? Because I have called. Every time you hear Bible study, it's the calling of the Lord. The calling to repentance. And the calling to renewal. And the calling to reformation. And the calling to regeneration. The calling to live in a new life. God has called. Every time you come for Sunday worship. And then we hear the Sunday scripture, you hear the message. During the preaching is the call of God. The call of God to salvation, to sanctification. The call of God to sanctity and to sensible kind of life. Every time you come on Thursday or Friday and you are the revival service, it's a call to faith and it's a call to faithfulness. The, call, the Lord says, because I have called and then you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded it. 
But ye have set at not all my counsel, and would, and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation, and, your de and destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall ye call upon me, but I will not answer. God said, it's what you sow, you will reap. I call you, you didn't answer. You call me, I will not answer. It's relationship. It's relationship. And it's a boomerang. It, what you throw out is what you'll come back. And God says, because I called and you refuse, you too, you will call. And I will refuse. Verse 28, then shall they call upon me, but I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. They would, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Zechariah chapter 7. You see the attitude of those people. They were not willing to listen to the word of God and then change their lives and have the grace of God in their lives. And the Lord said their prayer will be the prayer of the hypocrite. Seeking me, they will not find me, he said. In Zechariah chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 8. Zechariah chapter 7, I'm reading to you from verse 8. And the word of the Lord came unto Zechariah, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Execute true judgment, and show mercy and compassion, every man to his brother, and oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, the stranger, nor the poor. Let none of you imagine it evil against his brother in your heart you know what that means well you see it in the quietness of your house and then you are turning out some opinions and ideas some plans some projects of evil against your brother against the innocent against somebody who is a child of god and you're thinking i will do this i will do this god says don't do that Imagine no evil against your brother, against your sister. And you know, many times I talk about husband and wife. And sometimes the husband, if you felt offended that your wife has done something, clear it up. My dear, I didn't appreciate that thing you did. The way you said that thing, that wasn't right. How could you talk to me, your husband, like that? But you know, some husbands will not talk. All they'll be doing is just turning things around in their mind, imagining evil, planning evil against their wife in their mind. It hinders your prayer. And sometimes it's the wife. And it's like, you know, I respect my husband. And I don't want you, I don't want to talk to my husband. I don't want you, you know, look at his face. And because of that false respect, because of that hypocritical respect, and because of that native cultural respect, instead of coming forward to say, my husband, how could you say that to me? How could you insult my mother like that? How could you do that to me? How could you just hide this from me? I'm just knowing this from outsiders. Instead of coming plain, all they do is just hide it in their hearts. And then they're churning it and turning it and ruminating over it in their mind. And the Lord says, don't do that. Because if you do that, it hinders your prayer. Sometimes it's in the church. That you are a leader in the church. And the leader has said something you don't appreciate. It's a human being. Go to him. With all respect, with all humility, sir, you said something the other time. And it went the wrong way in my mind, in the corner of my heart. I tried to forget it, but every time I tried to forget it, the thing is still, is still kind of pinching me. What did I say? This is what you said. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't mean what you're thinking. I said, you know, this is what I meant. Settle it. But you know, there are some people, they will not settle it. They'll be thinking evil in their heart. That's what God is saying. Do not imagine evil in your heart. That imagination of evil. That thinking of evil. That planning of evil actually hinders your prayer. Look at that passage again. It says in verse 10, oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, nor the stranger, nor the, nor the poor. Let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart. You know, when you think of what you are going to get, 
that he is the blessing, that he is the miracle, the outpouring of the fulfillment of the promise of God. It is that that will make you to say, what I want as a result of my prayer is greater than this little thing I'm trying to turn around in my mind. And you dispose of that thing, demolish that thing, destroy that thing, get rid of that thing, so that your, your ground will be clear for prayer. Then your prayer will be on real, proper, right praying ground let none of you imagine evil against his brother in your heart in verse 11 but they refused to hack him and he pulled away the shoulder and stopped their ears that they should not hear ye they made their hearts as an adamant stone you know what that means they trained themselves not to hear they train themselves to harden themselves against the teaching, the instruction, the counsel of the word of God. You know, there are people that do that, that will train themselves. They hear, but they train themselves not to hear. They ought to repent. They train themselves not to repent. They ought to turn around and change. You have a new life, but they train themselves not to change, not to have a new life. And therefore, it says they made their hearts like an adamant stone, unbreakable, impenetrable, that the word of God cannot penetrate. Are there people like that coming to Bible study every Monday and yet there's no change? And, what, and they'll never miss Bible study, you know. They're always there. And yet you do not see the effect and the impact of that study in their lives because deliberately they had in their hearts. And it's like, say what you want to say, I will not hear. But you know, it's going to hinder your prayer. Verse 12, yea, they made their hearts as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the law and the words which the Lord of hosts has sent in his spirit by the former prophets. Therefore came a great wrath from the Lord of hosts. Therefore it has come to pass that as he cried and they would not hear, so they cried and I will not hear, says the Lord of hosts. I, I, I'm sure you are getting the point. The Lord says, when I call you and you don't hear, when you call me, I too, I will not hear. Micah chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 4. Micah chapter 3, we're looking at verse 4. Micah, you go a few books back, you get to Micah chapter 3, verse 4. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. You see that? Because of the hypocrisy and because of the sinfulness and the wickedness, it says, then shall they cry unto the Lord and he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. They have behaved themselves evil in their doing james chapter 4 verse 3 in james chapter 4 verse 3 it tells us another reason why some people's prayers are not answered james chapter 4 verse 3 he has can receive not because he has can miss that he may consume it upon your lusts he has a miss that you may consume it upon your loss. Those are some examples of wrong praying. And the Lord is challenging us and the Lord is telling us that we need to get that out of the way so that then we'll now be clear and we'll be able to pray aright and God will answer our prayers. In Matthew chapter 6, I'm looking at verse 7. Matthew chapter 6, looking at verse 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions. When you pray, use not vain repetitions when you pray use not vain repetitions and you know there are some places where they write the prayers down the prayers of their leader or maybe he's the leader to say he wants to help the people in in his church to know how to pray very well and therefore they will write the prayers down they may write it in a book and then you have those books in the bookshops for people to buy 
And when their members want to pray, they'll just open the book like this and just be repeating those prayers. When you have stomach problem, there's a prayer to pray. When the enemies are after you, there's a prayer to pray. When there is a territorial curse or yoke, as they say, this is the prayer to pray. When there are miscarriages, this is the prayer to pray. When the enemies are pursuing you, they will not allow you to rest in the dream in the day. This is a prayer to pray. And there are people that carry such prayer books about it's a waste of money to even buy the books. It's a waste of time to even read those prayers because God will not hear. Those are vain repetitions. Think about it now. If we need to write prayers now, I think Matthew should have just followed Jesus Christ and write all those prayers. When you have epileptic spirit, write the prayer down. When you have a affliction in your body, write the prayer down. At least from the life, from the prayer life of Jesus. And then anytime they had any problem, they'll just repeat those prayers. Do you see that there's no prayer book in the Acts of the Apostles? Do you see that those apostles did not come together whenever there was any problem and then read the prayers? Do you know that Moses was a great man of prayer? And the children of Israel did not write all those prayers down so that whenever Jehoshaphat had any problem, all that Jehoshaphat will do is to take the book of prayer written by Moses and then be repeating it. There are some people that will repeat the Psalms. Other people will repeat some other prayers. And the Lord is saying that he's not going to hear that kind of prayer. Look at verse 7 again. And when, and, but when you pray, use not vain repetitions of the heathen you. It makes you a heathen. Makes you a pagan. Makes you an unbeliever. Makes you somebody who is outside the kingdom. And don't let me hear that any believer in deeper life is making himself a pagan and heathen by just buying some prayer books and repeating those prayers. Don't backslide because of, you know, this kind of thing. And the Lord Jesus Christ said, those have been repetitions. For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. I pray God will help us to change. And to correct all the things we need to correct. So that our prayer life will become fruitful and effectual in Jesus name. I'm looking at Job chapter, uh, Job chapter 35. Job chapter 35. We're looking at verses 12 and 13. Job 35 verse 12. There they cry, but none giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. You know, it's pride that doesn't allow us to listen to instruction from the word of God. It's pride that makes us to say, I'm all right the way I am. I don't want to listen to any teaching, any preaching. It's pride. And it says in verse 12, there they cry, but not giveth answer because of the pride of evil men. Surely God will not hear vanity, vain repetition, vanity. Surely certainly god will not hear vanity neither will the almighty regard it let's come now to point number two in point number two we're looking at exhortation to write motives in prayer exhortation to write motives in prayer in matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 6 matthew chapter 6 verse 6 but thou when thou prayest Enter thou into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret. That part of, of this the teaching it tells us when you pray, you should be alone. You are not trying to attract anybody's attention. This is talking about personal prayer. This is talking about private praying. This one, you take your personal need, you take it to the Lord and say, Lord, look at the challenge in my life, the challenge in my family, the challenge in my ministry. And I, I'm taking this to the Lord and this is personal. This is private. And it says you'll enter into your closet. And let's see some things concerning this in Genesis chapter 32. Genesis chapter 32, I'm reading to you from verse 24. Genesis 32, reading from verse 24. Here we learn 
how Jacob prayed in verse 24 and Jacob was left alone and there wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day he had a large family he sent all of them away he needed to really get serious now on his knees before the Lord and they were told Jacob was left alone and they wrestled a man with him until the breaking of the day and when he saw that he prevailed not against him he touched the hollow of the of his tie and the hollow of Jacob's tie was out of joint and as he, as he wrestled with him and he said let me go for the day breaketh and he said I will not let you go except you bless me I'm sure you know this story the point is he was left alone and look at second Kings I'm reading from chapter 4 second Kings chapter 4 this principle of excluding other people not seeking the attention of anybody not looking for the praise of men not looking for the appreciation of people for them to know that you are praying but sh you, you shut yourself up and then between you and the lord you bring the request unto the lord in second kings chapter 4 reading from verse 32 and verse 33 it says in verse 32 and when elisha was come into the house behold the child was dead and laid upon his bed he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the lord you see that principle even elisha knew that elisha knew that he went into the house and shut the door and then i was going to bring his request before the lord of course the lord answered him i pray the lord will answer you and then you find um, in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 9. We're reading verse 40. Acts, chapter 9. We're looking at verse 40. Here it says, But Peter put them all forth and kneeled down and prayed. He put them all forth, that is, he sent everybody out. And just between him and God, he wasn't about to dramatize anything publicize anything advertise anything it wasn't about to look for the praise of men he just wanted to uh, pray to the lord god in heaven and then we're told when he put them all forth then he prayed and then he turned to the body turned him to the body and said tabita arise and she opened her eyes and when she saw peter she sat up and then we're told in acts of the apostles chapter 10 Acts of the Apostles chapter 10 verse 13 And Cornelius said for days ago I was fasting until this hour And at the ninth hour I prayed in my house I prayed in my house Not like the Pharisees going to the corner of the street Shouting They are praying Not like the Pharisees In the public uh, transport Shouting And calling the name of God And praying and praying that people may know and then they will say looks like you are a great prayer warrior oh yes that's my ministry trying to attract attention but you know Cornelio said I prayed in my house I pray God will help us to obey the word of God Isaiah chapter 26 I'm reading from verse 20 Isaiah chapter 26 reading from verse 20 here the word of the Lord is telling us it says come my people enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as sweet were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed the lord is telling us then he says when you pray you enter into your closet and when you have shut the door you pray to your father who sees in secret to pray with the right motives must be cured from the carnality of the Pharisees and be free from the hypocrisy of those hypocrites. We need to shut out all others when we're praying. Not seeking to be seen, not seeking to be known, not seeking to be praised by men. Freedom from pride, from selfish ambition. Forgetting other people is so important for acceptable praying. This principle of exclusion. That is excluding other people, not praying that they may see you, not attracting their attention. That's what you call the principle of, of exclusion there in prayer. Implies that we exclude any other thing that will distract our attention. 
It means that we do not advertise our praying to draw people to ourselves. Only those who are praying like that, and then they come to the presence of God, and they are concerned only for the attention of the Lord. Those are the people that will enjoy the answer to their prayer. Understanding this principle in the whole scripture on praying effectively will mean that we do not shut, we do not only shut out people, we shut out things that will distract our attention. While it is important to be in the secret place of prayer, we must also understand it is really important, very important to abide in the secret place of the Almighty. Because it's when we're in that secret place of the Almighty, then we can pray and God will answer our prayer. Shut out people, yes. Shut out pride, too. Shut out the society, yes. Shut out sin, as well as Satan. And it is when we follow that principle, then we have great expectation. And from tonight, your prayers will be answered. Yeah. Matthew chapter 6, we come to point number 3. Expectation of renewed mind in prayer. Expectation of renewed mind in prayer. What a great thing we have here. Look at the latter part of verse 6. Chapter 6, verse 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at the latter part of verse 6. And thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. Thy father which seeth in secret, what a great assurance that is, that God answers our private personal prayers. When we, when those things coming from the lips of the Lord Jesus Christ assures us that God sees in secret. He sees all secret things that human eyes cannot see. And he sees the real hidden desires and bodies of the heart. And he will answer our prayer. Our needs, our desires are sometimes inexpressible. Weightier and deeper than words can express. But God who is acquainted with our real desires will answer and grant those desires. Not merely the words will speak, but even the desires. And then he tells us in verse 8, Be ye not therefore like unto them. Don't be like those Pharisees, like those Sadducees. Then he says, For your father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Underline that word in your Bible, before. Before ye ask him, for your father knoweth what things ye have need of, before ye ask him. Hey, there's something in scripture you need to understand from tonight. In Isaiah chapter 60, Isaiah chapter 65, we're looking at verse 24. Hold that word before ye ask him. Before ye ask him, hold that word in your mind. That your father already knows what needs are those that you have. And see this principle that before you even started praying, God knew already. And therefore, vain repetition is not necessary. Showmanship in prayer is not necessary. Advertisement is not necessary. Drama, theater is not necessary. Just with your heart, you come to the Lord and then say, Lord, here am I. He said, yes, I knew that before you even came. And that's why he answers speedily. Isaiah chapter 65, we're looking at verse 24. And it shall come to pass before they call. Before they call. Before you call, God will answer. He says, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. And that's very interesting. Look at some examples in the Bible. Genesis chapter 24. In Genesis chapter 24, we're looking at it from verse 12. Genesis chapter 24, verse 12. And he said, O Lord God of my master Abraham, I pray, I pray thee, send me good speed this day and show kindness unto my master Abraham. Before, uh, behold, I stand here by the well of water. And the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water. Let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, Let down the pitcher. And I pray thee that I may drink. And she shall say, Drink, and I will give thy camels drink too. 
Let that same, let the same be she that thou hast appointed for thy servant Isaac. And there shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto my master. And it came to pass before he had done speaking that behold, Rebekah came out. Before she, he had done speaking, behold, Rebekah came out. You see that principle? That's what God said. That before you even come to ask, come there already. And while you're still speaking, he says, I will answer. Look at verse 45. And before he had done speaking, in my heart, behold, Rebekah came forth with her pitcher on her shoulder. And she went down unto the well and drew water. And I said unto her, let me drink, I pray thee. And then the story goes on. It shows you how God answers speedily. Look at the first Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. While we're still praying, before we finish the prayer, the answer is coming already. In uh, First Kings chapter 18, I'm reading from verse 36, and it came to pass at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day. You know, it was very specific in the prayer. Let it be known this very day that thou art the God, God in Israel. And that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back again. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice. I was still praying just at that very moment you see the assurance God is telling the Lord is telling us he said before you even ask the Lord knew he knew and because of that there's no wasting of time he will answer our prayer and when all the people saw in verse 39 they fell on their faces and they said the Lord he is God the Lord he is God look at first Samuel I'm reading from chapter 7 for Samuel chapter 7 the principle here is the Lord knew the request before you came. And before you prayed, the Lord knew what you were asking for, what you were going to ask. And the Lord is saying that he will answer while you are yet speaking. For Samuel chapter 7 verse 9. And Samuel took a sucking lamb and offered it for a burnt offering holy unto the Lord. And Samuel cried unto the Lord for Israel. And the Lord heard him. And as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. And they were smitten before Israel. You see, he was still offering the sacrifice. He had not even finished. As he was offering the sacrifice, the Philistines came and then the Lord thundered a great thunder and God answered. That's how God is going to answer your prayer. In 2 Kings chapter 20, 2 Kings chapter 20, I'm reading from verse 1. In those days was Ezekiel seek unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came unto him and said unto him, Thus says the Lord, Set thine house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Here, here Ezekiel was sick and sick to the point of death. And the man of God Isaiah came and said, Isaiah, uh, Ezekiel, this is, this is a message uh, coming from heaven for you. Set your house in order because you will die and you will not leave. And then we're told, then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart. And I've done that which is good in thy sight. And Ezekiel wept so. And it came to pass a fault that is before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court that the word of the Lord came unto him. You see, God answered the prayer. Ezekiel was still praying. Isaiah had not gone too far. That's what the Lord is telling us. That he knows. He knows the need. He knows the request. He knows the challenge. And he knows what you are facing. And he says, before you even call, I will answer. He says, while you are yet speaking, I will hear. And then look at verse 5, turn again and tell Ezekiel, the captain of my people. Thus says the Lord God, of the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer. 
I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. You see all these examples. While the people were still praying, the Lord answered. And I'm telling you from the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, while you are praying, the Lord will answer. Daniel chapter 9. In Daniel chapter 9, we see the same principle. That while the prayer was still going on, it wasn't a, it wasn't a far away time, but the answer came. Daniel chapter 9, I'm reading from verse 20. And whilst I was speaking, he was still speaking, he was still praying. And whilst I was speaking... I'm praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplication before the Lord my God uh, for the holy mountain of my God. And yea, whilst I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening oblation and informed me and talked with me and said, Oh, Daniel, I am now come for to give this skill and understanding. This is how your answer will come. You see, all these people of God from the time of uh, from the time of Genesis, when Eliza prayed, looking for a wife for Isaac, and while he was just speaking, just at the end of the prayer, like this, the answer came. In the case of Samuel, the same thing. While he was still offering the sacrifice, the answer came. In the case of Elijah, hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that I've done everything according to thy word. Immediately, the answer came. Ezekiah, the same thing. A man that was sick to the point of death. While he was still talking to the Lord, God said, Isaac, go and tell him, I've answered the prayer. And let's look at Acts of the Apostles, chapter 12. Acts, chapter 12, we're reading from verse 5. Acts chapter 12 verse 5 Peter therefore was kept in prison and, But prayer was made without ceasing of the church unto God for him The people of God gathered together and they were praying And then it says and when Herod would have brought him forth The same night Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and the keepers before the door before the door came the prison and behold the angel of the Lord came upon him and a light shined in the prison and he smote Peter on the side and raised him up saying Ar arise up quickly and his chains fell off from his hands all the chains will fall from you and the angel of the and the angel said unto him, Get thyself and bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he saith unto him, Cast thy garment about thee and follow me. And he went out and followed him. And he wished not that it was true. That which, which was done by the angel but thought he saw a vision. And when they passed the first and the second watch, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth in unto the city, which opened to them of his own accord and they went out and passed on through the through one street and forthwith the angel departed from him and when peter was come to himself he said now i know of a short him that the lord has sent the his angel and has delivered me out of the hand of herod and from all the expectation of the people of the jews and when he had considered the thing he came to the house of mary the mother of john whose son name was mark where many were gathered to together praying they were still praying and then the answer came they had not finished the prayer and when peter came out of that prison miraculously they said where will i go and the place they went was the house of the mother of john mark where the people were still praying and that's what the lord is telling us that when god and when god gives us a promise he answers speedily that before you call i will answer and while you're still speaking, then it says, you he will hear. Second Chronicles chapter 18, verse 31. Second Chronicles chapter 18. I'm reading from verse 31. All these things I show you, I show every one of us, that whenever we pray, it's at that time that we're praying, we should be expecting the answer. You see all these people we read about, Old Testament, New Testament, while the prayers were still going on. The prayers were coming down. In Second Chronicles chapter chapter twenty chapter eighteen, verse thirty one. Second Chronicles eighteen thirty one. And it came to pass 
when the captains of the chariot saw Jehoshaphat that they said it is the king of Israel therefore they compassed about him to fight but Jehoshaphat cried out and the Lord helped him and God moved them to depart from him this was the strategy of Ahab he said Jehoshaphat you put on the royal garment the royal apparel I will just dress ordinarily disguised himself and then Jehoshaphat dressed like a king and these people fighting against Ahab they were looking for Ahab the king and so their captain had said don't look for any other man when you see any man dressed like a king that's him shoot him and bring him down and kill him and this Jehoshaphat innocently and ignorantly who dressed as a king then they said that's the man get him and they all surrounded him and then he prayed and that prayer was answered immediately and that she assures us then that God will answer our prayer and he will answer speedily in Jesus name he knew the request before you asked and once you just call upon the Lord he gives you the promise he says he will answer in John chapter 15 I'm reading from verse 7 John chapter 15 we're looking at verse 7 if ye abide in me and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. If ye abide in Christ, and he abides in you, and the promises of God abide in you, then he says, you'll ask what you want, what you will, what you desire, then he says, he will answer. Today, he will answer. First John chapter 3. In First John chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 20 to verse 22. First John chapter 3 verse 20 For if our heart condemn us God is greater than our heart And knoweth all things Behold beloved If our heart condemn us not Then we have confidence Toward God And whatsoever we ask We receive of him Will you receive Whatsoever we ask we receive of him Because we keep his commandments And do those things Which are pleasing in his sight first john chapter 5 first john chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 14 this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will he heareth us he heareth me i said he heareth me whatever way as that's what the lord has said that when we ask that he hears us if we know that he hears us whatever we ask we know that we have the petitions that we desire of him ephesians chapter 3 in ephesians chapter 3 reading from verse 20 ephesians 3 looking at verse 20 now unto him that is able to do is our God able exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages world without end tonight you are going to pray but don't pray yet but tonight you're going to pray differently the request you have you'll put it down and then when you pray you'll watch before tomorrow morning the answer has come yeah. because that's what jesus said he said the father knows already what you need what you're asking for and we see we have seen all these examples of men and women like you and i and they prayed and God answered and God said I am God I change not and Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what he did before he's still doing today but remember be in the secret place of the most high Psalm 91 in Psalm 91 I'm reading from verse 1 he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, he is my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid. 
for the terror by night, nor for the arrow by fly by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that walketh at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. It shall not come near thee. Only with thine eyes thou shalt behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because he has made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high thy habitation, there shall no evil, evil befall thee. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. Thou, he shall, they shall bear thee up in their hands. Lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the, and the dragon shall thou trample on the feet. Because he has set his love upon me. Therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high. Because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. God says he will answer. And he answers speedily. At the time we ask him, that's when he answers. He says, he will call upon me and I will answer. I will deliver him in trouble. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. Will I satisfy him and show him my salvation? The Lord is ready to answer your prayer. Everyone who prays here tonight, God will answer. Mark it down, all that request. What we've been praying for for a long time. And it appeared that heaven had been closed and shut up. Tonight, heaven is open. Remember, you are not a Pharisee. You are not a Sadducee. You are a child of God. Your father knoweth what things ye have need of. Before ye ask him, ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find. Knock, it shall be opened unto you. Everyone that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. The doors of heaven are open. Stand up and ask the Lord. And say, Lord, I'm here tonight. I'm here tonight. You are answering my prayer. Impossibilities are becoming possible tonight. Mountains are moving away tonight. And all the attacks and all the afflictions, everything is going tonight. And then all the difficulties in your way, spiritual difficulty, material difficulty, all those things the devil has been kind of tormenting your life with. The Lord is saying tonight, I knew you will come and I was prepared for you and I want to answer your prayer and I want to take all those challenges away from your life. Tonight is that night we can pray and the Lord says he will answer. He is your father. He loves you. He's been thinking about you. He's been planning concerning you. And he says, call upon me and I will answer you. And I will show you my deliverance, my salvation, my redemption, my miracle. That's what the Lord said he will do. He says, before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. The attacks of the devil, they are broken. The chains of the devil, they are broken. The cause is taken away. And the problems are taken away. The mountains are moved away. The difficulties and challenges are melting away. Before they call, I will answer them. Before they call, I will answer them. And while they are yet speaking, the Lord says, I will hear. That's what he does for the family. That's what he does for his children, for his sons and daughters. That's how they experience it at that time. Anna prayed and the answer came immediately. Moses prayed and the answer came immediately. Eliezer prayed and the answer came immediately. Jehoshaphat prayed and the answer came immediately. Ezekiah prayed and the answer came immediately. Daniel prayed and the answer came immediately. And that's the promise of the Lord. He said, before they call, I will answer. While they're yet speaking, I will hear. What a great opportunity to be a child of God. A great privilege to be a child of God. That the promises I say, yes and amen. And that God will never fail. And God says, I change not. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. He says, when you stand praying, believe that whatsoever things you have asked, that he has given unto you, believe. 
and those promises are fulfilled God is no respecter of persons he answers everyone all his children just take the method of the Pharisee away, the motive of the Pharisee away, the manner of the Pharisee away. That's all, that's all, that's all. And then come with a plain heart, a simple mind, a believing heart, a yielded soul, a yielded spirit. And then you come to the Lord saying, Oh Lord, I'm coming on the basis of your promise, on the basis of your word that cannot fail. And then he will answer. It doesn't no matter how great the challenge may be, how great the problem may be. He says he will answer. And he will answer. Doesn't matter how long the problem has been there. He says he will answer. And he will answer. He has never failed. And he cannot fail. He has never failed. He will not fail you. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The answer is coming right there now. Right there now. Right there now. Immediately. While they are yet speaking. For your father knows that she have need of all these things before he ask him. Your father knows that you have need of all these things before he ask him. There's no doubt in your mind she is answering your prayer tonight. No confusion. No unbelief. It's answering your prayer tonight. He never fails. He never, never fails. He loves his own. He does not want any of his people to continue under any oppression and any yoke, under any unresolved problem. Yes, he always answers. Yes, he always answers. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. His favor is upon your life. You have the answer already tonight. You have the miracle already tonight. You have the request fulfilled already tonight. Now you can thank the Lord and praise the Lord and say, Lord, I thank you. How, how wonderful you are. How great you are. You have answered my prayer. You have answered my prayer. You have answered my prayer. I'm going home with the answer. I'm going home with the miracle. I'm going home with the, vi with the victory. I'm going home with the fulfillment of the promise of God tonight. I have got it. I have got it. You cannot fail. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. Wonderful privilege tonight. Wonderful opportunity tonight. That now you have the answer. It's yours already. In Jesus' name we pray. Brothers and sisters, this is my night. I said, this is my night. God is going to roll your body away. God is going to take the mountains away. All those things that oppress your life and you have voiced it up before the Lord. Tonight, the Lord has answered your prayer. No doubt in your mind, no fear in your heart. There is nothing any. There is nothing that is chasing you anymore. You are free. The yokes are broken. The paths of the enemies they are cancelled. 
as you go back home you go back home rejoicing the answer will run after you the answer will go back with your home impossibilities have become possible raise up your hand we're praying together father in the name of jesus we thank you for the privilege of praying thank you for our brothers and sisters your own sons and daughters thank you for youth and children oh lord we know tonight everybody is going to receive answer and therefore lord we pray that all the mountains are presented before you all those mountains i command you come out in jesus name impossibilities and roadblocks and hard walls that they have been knocking against and they cannot make the have not been able to make progress all those walls of hindrance i bring you down in jesus name all the jericho walls in front of the people of god in front of any brother any sister any child any family here all the jericho walls i command you come down in jesus name all the sickness all the infirmity all the challenges of the mountains all the affliction and all the demonic oppression and attack you cannot remain there we have the watch of the lord the word of our savior and the word of our king and the word of the almighty god that while we are yet speaking that he will answer and therefore all those things i command you get out in jesus name my dear sister there with the weakness in your body and the pain in your body you cannot carry the weakness and the pain back home because we're standing now together in unity of faith concerning you that pain and that weakness come out in jesus name oh lord the poverty and the joblessness and all the things and that is making the people of god to so but i'm a child of god why am i having this and they cry in the night and cry in the day all those tears are wiped away in jesus name oh lord i pray provision will come prosperity will come breakthrough will come and i pray oh lord that your blessing will be upon your people in jesus name the sickness and the infirmity upon the Egyptians will not be upon the Israelites. And the sicknesses and the afflictions upon the people of the world will not be upon the people of God here in Jesus' name. With the blood of Jesus, you are cleansed. With the protection of his name, you are protected. Every evil sin is taken away from your life. From tonight, be free in Jesus' name be delivered in jesus name as you go go in the success in the blessing in the breakthrough in the abundance of the lord in jesus name from now on there's a testimony in your mouth a testimony in your family as you go blessings will run after you as you go all evil things will clear away from you you continue now from today to enjoy the miracle presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Confirm it, O Lord, in every life. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I've got my miracle. I said I've got my miracle. Nothing will take it away from you. God bless you. You can go home rejoicing.